Hello race fans, my name is Taylor and welcome back to Above the Yellow Line. This is part two out of two for the podcast this week where Zachary Bell and I will be talking about the Texas All-Star Race happening this weekend. We go over our picks, who we think will race their way in, who we think will win the fan vote, and who's going to win the whole thing. We also are going to talk about some changes that might be happening in the Fox broadcast booth as Jeff Gordon weighs his options between a higher role at Hendrick Motorsports or the booth. So we're going to speculate a little bit about that and what that means. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's move on to this weekend with the Texas All-Star Race, which Zach, I know, is very excited about. So we'll get to that. There's a lot to break down here because honestly, there's also no secret. I've said this a lot this episode, but no secret. It's confusing. Um, I've looked at this maybe like six to ten times. I know Zach has looked at the format quite a few times. I'm not going to try to explain it because it's one of those things where I think we're all just going to have to kind of sit and watch it play out for us to understand the rules. But I'm going to have them up on the screen for you here so you can read them, try to make sense of them yourself. If you understand it, please let me know how this works because I am lost. I mean, I get the field inverts and everything, but it, it's, it's a lot to pack into one race. But we're not really going to focus on that per se. We're going to focus on the talent, the, the all-stars. We're going to focus on the drivers trying to make their way in, the fan vote, who we think is going to win this. So. To start, I have some questions. Up for you is the lineup for the All-Star Open based on, it's based on owner points. And I wanna talk quickly about who we think is gonna race in, who's, get, who's getting the fan vote. So I think we can get this out of the way real fast, Zach. Bubba Wallace is getting the fan vote. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it'll be interesting if he wins one of these segments to see who technically gets the fan vote, right? Right. Like, I'm pretty sure last, like last year, Clint Boyer got the fan vote, and NASCAR was trying to tell us like, "Oh no, he won the vote." Like, no, Bubba Wallace won the vote, and then he ended up, you know, wrecking out with Michael McDowell. So yes, yeah, that Bubba Wallace. Right. As long as Bubba Wallace doesn't wreck his car, he'll be in the All Star race. I have no doubt about it. Yeah, I think his fan base is so strong, um, and if you compare it to the others, he's trying to compete against going into the All-Star race. There's no question he's going to do it. I I do think he could have raced his way in, and probably he might. I think he can. We've seen it before. Um, 20, 2019, correct? Yep, 2019 at Charlotte. He raced his way in, and he has an emotional moment with Ryan Blaney in the garage afterwards. I love uh, that. For those of you that remember, you know this is a time where there were rumors about RPM shutting down. Um, and them selling the team or something, and Bubba being out of a ride. A highly emotional time, of course, for Bubba. Uh, something we're used to with him, I feel like, is, is highly emotional moments, and that's not being critical, but it's true. Yeah. And I, you know, I mean, I, I'm going to the race. Like, I want to see Bubba in the race, you know. Maybe Bubba's not an all-star in the same definition uh, as, like, Chase Elliott or Kyle Larson is, but he's a star of the sport, you know. People pay to see Bubba Wallace race. If people pay to see a particular driver race, large amounts of people pay to see a particular driver race, that's how you define All-Star for me and NASCAR. It's a fair definition, I would say. Um, yeah, I think I expect him to do decently. I know he's on a different team, different manufacturer than he was at Richard Petty Motorsports. But a lot of the big question around this, and I'm going to say this multiple times through the rest of the video, is what would you do for a million dollars? And we're going to see a lot of these teams Keeping in mind, if your car has to make it to the all-star race, do what it takes. And for and with that segue into what drivers we think will race their way in. We also we mentioned Bubba Wallace. If anything, he'll probably race his way in, if not the fan vote, and even then probably has a good potential. Zach, I want you to mention your three drivers here, because there are three drivers that are able to race their way in based on winning stage one, stage two, and the the whole thing as a whole. Who do you think is gonna put their put their car in the main event so my first one's the low-hanging fruit it's tyler reddick like yes, he's on the pole. Yeah. and i don't know how much you want to talk about like the actual racing products we expect and like does texas even deserve this all-star race and stuff we'll but, talk about like, that in a second <laughs> but like based off of what we've seen how texas made it recently it's gonna pay to do well here um not to mention the guy finished second here last year rcr won won the summer race with austin dillon one two finish for rcr uh, on the pole at a track where it's really hard to pass it and an aero package where it's going to be even harder to pass it, you know, a one groove track, uh, starting on the inside line of row one is probably the biggest benefit you can have. So Tyler Reddick is someone who stands out to me. The next person is Daniel Suarez and he's looked relatively impressive on some of these mile and a half tracks. I, I flash back to Atlanta, uh, very, very different than Texas, of course, but you know, I mean, I feel like, you know, Trackhouse being an RCR affiliate, right? If we're going to talk about how RCR is clicking, 
RCRs clicking, clicking, clicking. They're looking really good, right? Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned them earlier. Trackhouse is obviously going to be a benefactor of that, as is the person who is my final pick. And this is a bit of a homer pick, but it's the all-star race. So if you're ever going to go homer, it's now or never, right? Right. It's Jones and that famed 43, that, that sweet 43. Um, also, a, also someone who receives the benefit of better performing RCR cars is Eric Jones. So I wouldn't, I'm not going to put it past Eric Jones. I think, you know, we kind of had like a draft pre-show as to like took, took, taking turns. And the yep. thing about Eric Jones is I would argue Eric Jones is like a top three talent of drivers in this field, right? Yes. Of the open field. Maybe the most talented outside of Tyler Reddick, probably right there with Reddick and Cindric, right? So the question for me is the equipment. I yeah. think Eric Jones can put himself in a position to win stage three. That's segment third. It's only a 10 lap segment, you know, and guys are going to be racing hard. Like, and the thing is, if this package is very, very similar to what they run at Daytona and Talladega, Eric Jones is a very, very good and very underrated super speedway racer. His first he couple is. At Daytona. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Eric Jones, you know, throws a little spice on there and just gets it in. Spices things up. Yeah. Yeah. Tribute to Bubba Wallace when Bubba got that 43 in it at Charlotte for like sheer grit and determination, basically. Pretty much. I mean, I expect Eric Jones to do well. Like I, like we mentioned, yes, we did do kind of a draft pick. I think things a little interesting here. Um, I would have also picked um, Tyler Reddick, no doubt, and Suarez, no doubt that Eric Jones will do well. But here's what, here's the route I chose. Like I said, what would you do for a million dollars? And I look at the guides in particular at Spruce Speed Ray races that we see just go for it. There's nothing wrong with it. They just go for it. And we've seen, I've seen at the road courses too. They will just go for it. The two drivers for me that I feel like could race their way in based on sheer grid determination and I want that money, Ross Chastain and we have Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I think for me, um, if you're going off of like, I will do what it takes, those drivers have that mentality to me, like nonstop every single weekend. Um, and then I have a kind of wild card pick. We mentioned Austin Centric is in this lineup. And I think in this field of drivers that we have to compete for that one, that those not one spot, but those three spots plus the fan vote to get into the main event. I think Austin Cindric has a really good shot. He's in Penske equipment, great equipment. He's also, I feel like a class of the field driver. Obviously he's going to be in the cup series next year. Xfinity series right now. He's really good in points. I don't, is he leading in points in the Xfinity he is leading series? Xfinity series points. And here's another thing to think about too. If Bubba Wallace were to race himself in, you know, who is someone that could be the second highest vote getter. And I think Austin Cindric's a very legit contender. That is true. I, Being the I think Spanish champion carries a lot of weight. Exactly. I Penske carries a lot of weight. You don't see a lot of guys from Penske in this race. So, I mean, him, I would think will be up there. Matt Benedetto is another person. Of course, we can shout out here for a fan, but always a contender in that department. Yeah, for me, he would have been next in line or like the top three, I think, in fan votes. Um, but Austin Sindrick, I think he has a very good shot. He's he also, I guess... And that's leave them out of this like whole conversation about drivers who have that mentality of like, I will do what it takes. I feel like Austin Cedric kind of has that too. I kind of see him in the same mindset Absolutely. as maybe Ross Chastain. Um, Absolutely he does. Yeah, and he's he's talented. There's no I think Zach and I were discussing this before the show, even that we're probably gonna we might see a win, a bold prediction for next season, but I see a cup series win for Austin Cedric next year in his car. No, we don't know exactly where he's going to end up next year, whether it's the Wood Brothers 21 or a Penske car, but a win nevertheless, I would say, for Austin Cedric. So we expect him to do very well. I expect him to race his way in. Now, we have to talk about who wins the whole thing, Zach. Who, who do you have to win the all-star race, the, the champion of champions, I guess? Uh, this is Ryan Blaney, and you might be like, Zach, like you just talked about your homework pick. Like, where is Denny Hamlin, right? And yeah, <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that I don't think Denny Hamlin can do it. I absolutely do. But I flash back to these Texas races, and Ryan Blaney has run really, really well. He's rattlesnake bitten in Texas, though. However, in a race that's only 100 laps, you know, a lot of these issues he seems to have where he has an expiring motor, stuff like that, funky tire issues, those things won't be as much of a factor in this race. You know, even if it is a little bit of a factor, you get a reset every segment. You know, there's like six segments. So he's going to get a reset. 
and and those things alone like i mean if he's there when the if he's there in the final stage if he's in the top like six or so that final stick six or eight he's he's gonna have a shot to win and i think we're gonna see a trend where the all-star race is gonna be taken over by young drivers remember blaney should have won the bush clash this year he should have well chase Elliott wrecked him yep and then it's kyle bush was the beneficiary the Yes. Oh, well, mm. <laughs> he ran out a little bit of talent. You ran out of talent or judgment. You can pick which one, but you ran out of something. He wanted the win. Ran out of judgment then. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair. But this, but is guy, this is the guy who's who's a future star of NASCAR. Like it's time to start taking our journey and, and uh, no better place to do it than uh, the all-star race. I've argued this off screen, but I think Ryan Blaney for me is the, is the people's driver. I'd love to have a conversation about this at some point, but he's so good with the fans and the organizations he benefits, the uh, fight to for uh, cure for Alzheimer's and just everything he does, you know, the glass case of emotions podcast, he's so vital to the sport. I don't know if a lot of us really think about it or realize it with Ryan Blaney, but he's just I don't know. He's so good with people. And I think for NASCAR, having a driver that's so beneficial to the sport like that, and maybe he, he may, doesn't have maybe the like insane amount of wins to maybe back that up. And we look at the guys with wins to, to have the most success in the sport, but it's also what you do outside the car. And for me, if Ryan Blaney could win this weekend, like the all-star race for me, that's like, yeah, look, look at Ryan Blaney now as being the people's people of the sport, I would say. Um, I, I, I want to mention my winner pick here. I, Zach, you know, my viewers know, I go off of numbers. Um, but this time I kind of didn't. <laughs> I, I, I'm, off, I'm going off the mentality thing this year. And for me, a driver that I think is more hungry than anyone else in the field to prove themselves against the Hendrick Brigade, I would say, and prove that he still has what it takes is Kyle Busch. He is going to do whatever he can to beat out Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Whoever he has to, to prove he still has it. He wants the million dollars. He's a driver that won't back down. He's a driver that will do what it takes. Even if it means wrecking out your brother. It's happened in the past. So the race think, too, not to mention he won the fall race. race. Exactly. And he won the uh, X Xfinity or trucks there too. He won the truck race and he should have won the Xfinity race, but he failed. He's also exactly. in the Xfinity race this weekend. So he's going to get more, you know, laps on track than like everybody else. So, you know. Which is dangerous. Uh, it's always probably much as dangerous than anything he gets in a car he gets in but like especially something like this where he's has an advantage over the field literally. and also with all, exactly with all those inverts too and kyle bush is one of those drivers like i mentioned before especially like i mentioned this with kevin harvick as well but he's one of those drivers that can have a horrible day have something go wrong and he'll still manage to get into the top 10 um so with all these inverts i don't see that really being a challenge for him as it could be for other drivers so that's why with the mentality he is my pick to win the all-star race. Um, and I want to kind of end this with a few questions for you, Zach. One, I'm going to let you give your ode to Texas Motor Speedway. Why <laughs> do you like the race at Texas Motor Speedway? This, first of all, Texas Motor Speedway, not world-class racing, world-class facility. It is absolutely a track worthy of hosting the all-star race. Dallas Fort Worth is absolutely a market worthy of hosting an all star event such as this caliber. But in the modern definition of the all star race, last year we played with numbers slid back on cars and underglow lights and rinky dinky stuff to gimmick it up. And I mean, the underglow lights were cool. Not I mean, it was cool, but like, it's not like, come on, it's a gimmick. You know, we want to see these lights under the cars. Like, it's cool, but it's a gimmick. The number slid back is a gimmick. Running at Bristol was a gimmick. Okay, at Charlotte in 2019, they had those big nostril flares on the car. That too is a gimmick. You know, all these segments. If you're gonna sit here and use this to test anything for the next gen car, for um, return trips to mile and a half in the future or whatever, you know, here's the place to do it. Texas is arguably the worst track on the schedule in terms of the racing product, and it breaks my heart to say it. It breaks my heart into a million little pieces. I, I have grown up going to Texas and Motor Speedway since 2003. I have gone to- It's your home track. It's my home track. It's like 45 minutes away, you know, but like it's it's so perfectly built for the modern definition of the all-star race. Everybody wants to crap on it because it's Texas. 
And if you think about it, the all-star race is not what it used to be. It's a test session. And to me, there is no track better to test at for racing product, for racing, you know, racing styles and things that can make the on-track be product better than your worst track or one of the worst tracks. In the modern, in, if this is 2009, first of all, Texas is a lot better than 2009. But if this is 2009 where the also race is just an all out flat out race, you're not testing something, this is not, this is not the same sort of thing. But in the past like five or six years, it's just been test session. It's been playing with aero packages, horsepower, you know, spoiler, splitter, all sorts of funky stuff. So sure, have it in Texas. Um, there's not a better way to send off Eddie Gossage, probably the best promoter of the sports scenes and Humpy Wheeler, uh, someone very near and dear to my heart who has always made sure that if it's F minus racing at Texas Motor Speedway, it's an A plus everything else. So cheers to Eddie for that one. I hope to see him on Sunday. I'd love to get to meet him uh, and thank him for everything he's done for me and fostering my racing fandom, right? Because if we all started a racetrack somewhere, right? So exactly. I have a lot of sentimental feelings for Texas Motor Speedway and I'm very, very defensive about this all-star race because it's the sort of thing that a lot of people say it's a gift because they let Coda have the spring race, but like this is a chance for Texas to fix its image a little bit, you know, to revive its image within both NASCAR and IndyCar because it's struggling in both, you know. So that's kind of my my long form rant about why having the All Star race at Texas is a good choice. It's not any worse yeah. than other than if you're going to play the O. Well, it's a home to race, you know what I mean? It's a home race. It's got to be in Charlotte. Everybody cares about it. But, like, there's NASCAR drivers from Texas. Chris Buescher's from Texas. Like, this is a big deal for him, I'm sure, to have the all-star race at his home track, right? So, yeah, absolutely. It's a big deal. And I am someone who's a proponent of moving the all-star race across the country and giving everybody a chance to share in something that, although not as special as it was, you know, 15 years ago, it's still a very big deal. Anything that says all-star is a big deal. I think um, as the newer drivers or the younger drivers kind of step into their own, it's going to be a bigger deal again. I was going to let you rest on what you said. I wasn't going to add anything to it because very profound. And like, I, a lot of people were really cracked on this race, especially like at being at Texas Motor Speedway. Not going to lie. I'm one of them, but I do like what you left off with moving the all-star race kind of across country. You meant like rotating it, right? I want to make sure yeah. I get this correct. Right, okay. right. Like, I don't, I don't think we know the exact details of the contracts of the All Stars, but I imagine it's that SMI tracks, most SMI tracks uh, are in All Star worthy markets: Atlanta, Texas, Las Vegas, Charlotte. You know. Yeah, and well, so I don't know if it's an All Star worthy market or like Sonoma necessarily, but like, you know, those other ones are like they can rotate between the Bristol's of All Star worthy track because of its history, right? You know, if they ever get the fairgrounds back in Nashville, that's an all-star worthy market as well. So, you know, at, moving it is good, you know, because I would never, ever get a chance to see an all-star race in my life. Almost, that, that's almost a guarantee, right? Like, I'll, it's a very slim chance I'd ever get to go if it wasn't down the street from me, so. And I would agree. It gives viewers, it gives everyone a chance to see the best of the best, see something fun, non-points race, no high stakes, of course, for that million dollars. But I also think moving it around too, when I mentioned this in my last video or two videos ago, is also if you keep the all-star race in the championship race, especially, we won't dive much into that at the same track, you're going to probably see the same winners. Now we have the inverts and everything to mix things up, but if you mix the track around, it gives A, different people a chance to attend an all-star race, as Zach said, and B, it gives more drivers a chance to win at the track. Let's say they're not good at Bristol, but they're good at Texas. They're probably not going to win the Bristol All-Star Race, but they have a chance to do it the next season at Texas. So that is my take on it. I want to mention two more things before we close the video out. Speaking of the All-Star Race, we have an All-Star piece of news. Um, Jeff Gordon talked about his time in the broadcast booth, and we all know that NBC is taking over the broadcast time after Fox airs their last race with the Texas All-Star Race. First off, I kind of want to ask real quick, are you looking forward to that? But then the piece of news with this is Jeff Gordon is considering potentially leaving the booth to take on a higher stakes role, not a higher stakes role, but a higher up role at Hendrick Motorsports. Um, and there's speculation like from fans, obviously this is a Jeff Gordon decision. The fans do not make this for him, but should he take it? What, what should he do? But also what does this mean for the booth and the broadcast in general? I want to keep this very, very brief because this is very new developing news. I don't want to speculate well, on it too much. 
I mean, I won't speculate on it, but like if I'm Jeff Gordon, right? I feel yeah. like Jeff Gordon's awkward in the booth. It's a very awkward. It was awkward when it was him and DW and uh, Mike Joy. And then it was awkward when it was him and Mike Joy. And now it's awkward with him and Clint Boyer and Mike Joy. So if I'm, if I'm Jeff Gordon, I'm backing out. And I am taking my chances at Hendrick Motorsports because that's the real long game, right? You know, right. taking over having a high stake role at Hendrick Motorsports. That's the thing that sets your kids up for life, you know. That's the thing that sets your grandkids up, you know, and, and giving them a chance to almost guaranteeing them a career in NASCAR if they want it, right? That's the sort of thing Jeff can do here. As for the booth, in terms of like Fox itself, and I'll touch on NBC in a minute. Um, I would like to see Larry Mack come back to the booth. I don't know if Larry Mack wants to travel. We know he's our adopted grandfather. We've adopted him as our grandfather on the show. But if, we have a deep love for Larry McReynolds. He's just fantastic. But if if Larry wants to stay in Charlotte and do the studio thing, which I totally respect, understand, and support, whatever Grandpa Larry wants, he gets. Um, I there's, one, there's always one moment in our episodes where I just. <laughs> Oh, Zach, I love it. C- continue, continue. Anyways, back to the thing. I would like to see Jamie McMurray in the booth. Jamie, Jamie McMurray. Jamie, I think would be a good blend between what Jeff Gordon is and like Clint okay. Boyer. He's somewhere in the middle. He's someone who still has also recently been in these race cars more recently than Jeff Gordon. I mean, um, he was in a race. What the he, season? He, he raced the five hundred. He raced the five hundred yes. this year. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if he raced the five hundred next year. Um. That's who I would petition for personally. Um, I get, you know, some people would want to keep up like a Walter tradition and put Mikey in there, but between Mikey doing the SRX and I feel like Mikey's in a good spot with like the partial Xfinity schedule and being the trucks guy, like that's his thing. I would leave him there. Jamie doesn't have a thing yet, really. Um, and he's good in the booth. If we're I, looking long term, I yeah, really want to think about Kurt Busch, but that's like total speculative stuff. But Right, and I think for the booth, if we're looking at it, I also kind of question Clint Boyer's role in it. And obviously, there's nothing like he's going to say he's going to leave. He's probably going to stay. But I think the dynamic Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer had to start with was great. It was fun. It was playful. And now stale. it's kind of, yeah, it sounds stale, and it's kind of too much. You feel like there's a constant yelling at the TV, talking over each other. When Clint Boyer tends to talk to the drivers, there's a lot of overlapping and um, I do love Clint Boyer's personality um, in the booth. I just feel like they don't have the right combination right now. And I do think that Jeff Gordon, not making the decision for him, obviously, but like I think having a higher role at Hendrick Motorsports would benefit him and also the sport. You know, you see the post race pictures of, excuse me, of him with drivers and like Hendrick Motorsports, and he'll be like hugging him and talking to Mr. H. And I'm like, I think that's where he kind of wants to be. Here's. Okay. Something else I want to say, and I'm sorry if I cut you off, but my, no, go ahead. when Jeff's in the booth, when it's the three-man booth and, you know, call it whatever you want, but like, let's be real, Clint Boyer, Daryl Walsh, they're like loud, boisterous, like bush drinking, bush beer drinking, you know, rednecky sort of dudes, right? Yeah. And like, Jeff is not that. Jeff has never right. been. That. And I feel like Jeff tries to be something and he's not in the booth because he thinks that's what people want. Because he knows how much we love DW, and he knows how much people love Clint Boyer. No, Jeff, I want you to be Jeff. I want you to be, you know, the Wonder Boy, like this cool, calm, and collected. The guy who can go host SNL and then go, you know, be the, you know, West Coast swagger element to the booth. You know what I mean? Don't don't be redneck Jeff. Redneck Jeff is uncomfortable and weird. I'm just being honest with them. Like, no, just- and I appreciate that. It is, as a viewer, I would agree it's a little awkward. There's a lot of things that are, like, kind of pushed. A lot of things that I, you're just uncomfortable a little bit as a viewer. Um, so I would agree. So we're, we're going to wait and see. Obviously, there's not going to be news yet. I don't expect news anytime soon. But it, it was just posted today as a question from, I believe Adam Stern was the one who kind of released that on his um, Twitter page um breaking that a little bit and then it went around twitter and everything so it's very new um so we will see what happens we will also see who gets the million dollars the all-star open race is coming your way sunday at 6 p.m on fs1 and then the main event the all-star race is sunday at 8 p.m on fs1 it is not a points race but a fun time and it begs the question the million dollar question literally and the final time i will say this hopefully 
what would you do for a million dollars? So Zach, we're gonna close this out on a very fun question for you. <laughs> you're in a car, you're racing, you're racing against Kyle Busch, you're racing against Ryan Blaney, you're up to that caliber, you're a really good race car driver, Zach. And the question I'm gonna ask you is, I'm curious, what are you willing to do for a million dollars? What what would you be would you willing to wreck out your mom? Willing to wreck out the fan favorite, Chase Elliott? Listen, I'm definitely wrecking Chase Elliott. <laughs> I do it for 20 bucks. <laughs> I do it for free. Let's let's not get that as long as I get the guarantee he gets out of the car okay. I'm wrecking Chase Elliott for free. For free 99. If it's my mom. <laughs> I first of all, now I interpret this question in one way and one way only. It's would they wreck me? Yep. And mm -hmm. would my mom wreck me for a million dollars? I'd say probably. <laughs> so my answer is yes, absolutely, I would. <laughs> I would. I can't guarantee I'd be able to do it, but I would absolutely try to. So here's here's. I'll give you a little bit of an answer before we close this out. I would not, I would not write a family member to win a million dollars because they probably share it with me. However, if it was Kyle Bush or someone else in the field, not a, no, no strings attached, like no family members, whatever, I definitely would. So long story long, you do whatever it takes. I'm a little cautious. We'll see how this plays out. What will the drivers do? The question will be answered this weekend, even though it's not points, like I said, it's still fun. So make sure you watch this weekend on FS1, the NASCAR Cup Series at the Texas All-Star Race. And with that, we are done. Thank you all so much for watching Above the Yellow Line, the show where we talk all about the NASCAR Cup Series. Before we end, Zach, do you want to do you want to mention anything to the viewers? Want to close it out? Do your usual usual close that you do? Yeah, you know, sure, I'll do my usual close. But you know, of course, everything going on at Racing Refresh Dipstick Debates is making its triumphant return after the All Star Race. Um, if for some reason somebody who's at the All Star Race a listens to the show and b recognizes me. I would love to say hello. Um, I will also wreck you for a million dollars, but that's okay. Um, so, you know, I, if anybody wants to come meet me, hang out, link, whatever, I'll be there on Sunday for sure, hopefully Saturday. Other than that, of course, you know, my usual sign up, we get it now. So, you know, you know, I want to thank my parents for supporting my NASCAR addiction, my mom and my dad. Um, without them supporting it every week, some weeks more difficult than others to watch races, including this weekend. Um, yeah, thanks. Well, also, I guess I should, I mean, I should add that into my end of the video thing, because there's a lot of people to thank. There's a lot of people that make this possible and kind of tolerate the addiction. But yeah, yeah absolutely. I love the closeout. Um, you know where to find Zach over at Dipstick Debates. Now, where to find me? You can follow me on my Twitter page for race day coverage and daily updates from the world of NASCAR and beyond. I also do weekly Twitter spaces to hang out with you all, kind of discuss the current state of NASCAR. I love doing those. And also check out my Twitter page for kind of daily or weekly fan questions and you could be featured on the show. Also check out the Podium Finish. It is a great motorsports outlet with driver content. We also do pre-race and post-race. I am so excited to be doing some upcoming projects with them. So make sure you check them out. Finally, like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends and family. And while you do that, I wanna thank you all so much again for supporting the channel. Now until next time, we'll see ya.